Hello. In this video, I would like to talk a, lo a little bit about the global versus local optimum problem. And therefore, we just utilize our previous use case of the pendulum model. However, we are now going to identify not the friction coefficient b, but we would like to identify the length l. Although that might be a little bit like an academic example because the length of an object is normally quite well measurable, but just we take it as a cartoonic kind of example to demonstrate something. So the approach is generally exactly the same. We have our same pendulum model and we want to minimize it using the PEM approach, but now we are searching for the true length of the pendulum, so we assume that we have access to G, B, and M, but L is unknown. Okay, so pretty straightforward, basically, as in the previous case. So what we do is we define again some parameters. Based on these parameters, we define some or generate some synthetic data, uh, which we do not do here in this notebook again. But uh, we will basically also use the same cost function as before, also the quadratic Euclidean cost. And the only difference is now that the parameter which we're going to optimize, which we try to find, is this P1 is basically this L here, right? So previously we wanted to go for B, but B is now considered to be known, and we just go for P1, which is equal to L. The rest in terms of the cost function, the combination of the ODE with an ODE solver is identical. Okay. What we do now is we throw again this uh, cost function into our optimization uh, problem and we are going to, before we numerically solve it, we are going to study the cost landscape. So what we do is we again sum up the squared errors over our simulation trajectory and we plot it over different length values. Of course, the true length can be seen right here on the global optimum, which is obviously one meter. However, in contrast to our previous example, the length value seems to have a non-convex impact on the cost function. Because we do not have only this global minimum, but we also have a couple of local minima down here and also this valley here is basically representing another local minimum. And that's an issue, because if we utilize gradient descent based solvers like the standard gradient descent or the Newton algorithm, depending on our initialization values on the parameters, so here on the length, our initial guess on the length, we might end not up in the global optimum finding the true length value but we might end up in one of the local minima, which is basically representing not the true parameter value. Here in this simple one-dimensional case where we can just basically plot this cost landscape easily, that's not a big issue. We could basically just graphically identify for the true L, but if you consider high-dimensional problems where the parameters might be hundreds or thousands or ten thousands, that's not easy to plot, right? So in this case, we just need to consider that some of these parameters might have a nonlinear, non-convex impact on the cost function, and that may lead to the local versus global optimum problem. Let's just make that a little bit more vivid here and actually applying our optimization problem again using the Newton method. And as a first guess, uh, we will apply an initial guess of 0.5 meters for the length L here. So 0.5 meters, that's not really bad, right? So the real length of the pendulum is one meter, so 0.5 meter is at least in the right order of magnitude. So from an engineering point of guess, I would say that's not a bad guess. However, if we solve that, so if we uh, let it run, uh, we will find out that the actual outcome of this solution is really bad because um, if we go into the um, into the uh, solution here, which is hidden right now, we will actually find that the solution of the problem is around uh, 0.25 meters. So that basically means that the optimization solver being initialized like here has not converged into this global optimum here, but it has converged into one 
of these neighboring local minima up there. And if we plot the model response with this completely uh, erratic L, with this completely biased L, we can also see that the uh, noisy ground truth data and the simulated data of the identified model, they are completely off. And this local uh, minimum can be explained physically in that sense that the length value has a significant impact on the oscillating frequency of the pendulum and there seems to be some integer frequencies where the true frequency of the pendulum and the simulated frequency of the pendulum that they end up in an integer uh, ratio to each other and in this case there are certain valleys and uh, mountain uh, of these oscillations which are over each other and then lead to a local minimum in the cost function as we have also here in the plot. So obviously completely wrong parameter but it is a local minimum based on our initial guess which was not so bad. So how can we uh, try to compensate for this problem, especially if we have high dimensional problems. So one approach could be that we do multi-starting. So multi-starting would basically mean that going back here to our cost plot, that we uh, do a couple of initial guesses, not only at 0.5 meter here, but maybe also at 2 meter, 4 meter, 6 meter and so on, that we basically do a good guess of a set of initial conditions of L and then start gradient descent based solvers for all these different initial guesses and hope that at least one of those initial guesses was sufficiently close to the global optimum. So that would be a multi-start approach. Utilizing gradient descent based method and just multi-starting it a couple of times based on other different initial guesses. The other approach, and I would like to just illustrate that for you as a small example, is we can utilize so-called global heuristics which do not rely on gradient descent methods but which will basically probe the cost space, so in our case a parameter space, just heuristically. And a classical example of a global heuristic is a so-called particle swarm optimization. We will not go here into details. You can just click on that link and it will bring you to Wikipedia where all the important baseline information of the particle swarm uh, algorithm are already explained. And the good thing is that the particle swarm meta heuristic approach is already part of the optim.jl package so we don't have to program it for ourselves. So what we do is we will just recall the same cost function, so this cost is exactly the same cost function as before. The only thing which we do now is we define as a new solver, not the Newton solver, but the particle swarm optimization, which will basically shoot out 10 particles randomly into the uh, cost space, into the parameter space, and then iterate via some heuristics trying to find the global minimum. And indeed, uh, that, was, uh, that was successful in this example because as we can see after a couple of iterations of the particle swarm optimization we have been able to find <coughs> the global optimum also here because it is less sensitive to uh, local minimas. However, that is also somehow a trade-off because as we will see in one of the following videos meta heuristics are normally also not so efficient when it comes to local exploitation, so to local search, in contrast to guided gradient descent methods. So there's always a certain trade-off between robustness against local minima and fine-tuning of the potential solution candidates. However, the takeaway message of this video is that you should recap on global versus local minima and optima and that if a cost function may have multiple local minima which might be much inferior than the global minimum that you might need to apply additional techniques like multi-starting, meta heuristics or also other techniques in order to address this issue. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.